Hi, today we're going to talk about scalar dashboards. Dashboards are super useful when the metrics from the logs need to be visualized. A dashboard is a group of visualization of data in scalar, which could be graphs or tables. These graphs can help us understand the trends or patterns that can also help us identify when something doesn't look right. Now let's go ahead and configure some dashboards. One of the most popular ways to add a dashboard graph is through search. For instance, if I want to filter for my access log, I can then search for access log. We can expand this into a graph. This is a graph of number of matching events per second over a given time frame. In this case, it's four hours. From here, we can shad it, compare it with the previous time frame, or save it to the dashboard. You can then go to the dashboard and view the graph. For this demo, I have few app servers that are experiencing latency spike. Let's see if we can use a graph to pinpoint the source of this latency spike. Do you see the column on the left? These are called facets. Facets are parsed attributes from the log lines that are ingested or server attributes that are defined on the agents. These values are dynamically displayed. As you narrow down for a search parameter here, these facets would change based on the log line selected. I could select one app server if I knew which one was causing the spike. If not, I could select all the app servers by. Because this is a latency issue, let's look at the time facet and then look at the graph values. The graph value button only appears because it's a numeric field. If you observe, this graph value shows the average response time value. This is in contrast to the previous graph, which showed the average number of matches. Let's go ahead and save this graph to our demo dashboard. Although the default function is average function, I'm not limited to this function. Here are a number of other functions like minimum, maximum, and percentile. Percentile graphs are more sensitive depiction of slow performance. They give a better sense of outliners that may get lost in the average. Let's select 90th percentile and 99th percentile and then add it to our dashboard. All this is great. Now let's see how my individual services are contributing to the latency spike. If I could break this graph down by maybe URI path, I could see which service is causing the time spike. I see here the app friends URI is hugely contributing to my periodic latency spike. While profile and home are generally slower than the other URIs, the graph makes it clear that the latency spike is coming from my friend's URI. Now let's go ahead and save this to the dashboard. Adding a regular graph to a dashboard triggers a process on Scalar that pre-computes graph data but we are not able to do this for breakdown graphs. It is possible to put the breakdown graphs on the dashboard, but they will be slower to render than other graphs. Let's take a look at all the graphs on our dashboard. As you can see, there is a lot we can do from UI, but if the programmer in you insists on doing the JSON way, we offer additional functionality or complex computation in here. Here's the first access log that we added, followed by the time graph. Here's the multiplot graph that we added with 90th and 99th percentile. And lastly, the breakdown graph. 
Let me add a JSON config that has hard coded the facet values into a multipod graph. So this is no longer a breakdown graph, which means we can pre-calculate and render values more quickly. You can also change color, labels, and styles via JSON. Let's update the file and view our dashboard. Now keep in mind, it might take a few minutes when you do this for the first time. And here is a multiple graph. These two graphs are displaying the same values, but the multiplot graph would be faster since it's hard-coded and the values are cached. The drawback to the hard-coded values, of course, is that if the URI change, your breakdown graph would automatically update to show the new values, versus multiplot would need to be updated manually. I am now going to show you an interesting feature. This is my web server dashboard. I can see aggregated values across all servers. But if I click here, I can instead see per server values for each graph. We accomplish this via, via dashboard parameters. Dashboard parameters are simple mechanism for using a single dashboard to view multiple data sets. Let's get into a JSON config to have a better understanding. You can define parameters in this section here then use them in the graph. For instance, name host parameter is defined at the top here along with a special parameter server host queue, which allows us to change the values of host from aggregate to any server that came through the log lines in the past 24 hours. This host field corresponds to the hash host hash in each of the dashboard sections below. When a user selects a different value for the host dashboard parameter, we conduct a new search and replace the hash host hash with the value that the user has selected. And that is how we are able to see per server values for each graph. I am sure you are all aware of our Power Query feature. If not, I strongly encourage you to look at our Power Query videos. Let's say you want to add all the server errors along with the URI path, sort them, and want to see the top five. Let's go into our queries. Let's click the query. Run it. Now you can add this to your dashboard and monitor the changes. into a dashboard and you see it. Now that we have a complete understanding of the scalar dashboard, if you want to keep a dashboard open permanently, perhaps on a wall mounted display, click the view full screen. Then click the three lined icon here and select the appropriate values. Now, nothing can escape your eyes. Feel free to leave a comment or if you have any questions or concerns, you can reach us at support at scalar.com. Thank you.